Today I'm going to be going over 20 dumb mistakes rookies make when visiting Las Vegas. Learning from these 20 dumb mistakes are going to make your trip 10 times better and that's because I've been to Las Vegas 12 times and I personally have done a lot of these mistakes myself. And as a bonus, if you stick around towards the end of the video, I'm going to be giving you my top recommendations on fun things to do in Las Vegas on the strip and off the strip. So let me go over to my desk and show you exactly what I'm talking about. There are thousands of horror stories where somebody breaks into a hotel room and stuff goes missing when you leave your room. So please do yourself a favor and avoid mistake number one. The mistake I see rookies make is not using the hotel safe or just plain out taking their stuff with them when they leave their room. Personally, I haven't had this happen to me before, but I have heard that it does happen quite a bit. So better to be safe than sorry. With that being said, you always want to make sure that your hotel room is locked before you step out. So on your way out, maybe pull it a couple times just to make sure that it's properly locked. You want to inspect the door, make sure that the little door stopper is actually working. I've seen situations where somebody checks into their room and it's actually really loose. Definitely don't want that, especially if room service is coming in while you're inside at a time where you don't want them to come inside if you know what I mean. Mistake number two rookies make is not asking for a complimentary room upgrade when they first check into their hotel. What a lot of people don't realize is being nice and friendly to the front desk people could go a long way. Just be really nice to them and ask them if they have any complimentary room upgrades available. And let's say for example, you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, make sure that you mention that and use that to your advantage. So let's say you do end up getting a complimentary room upgrade. Well, then the right thing to do is obviously give them a tip. It could be $20, $40, whatever you think is fair. If you do get a complimentary room upgrade, don't expect a massive suite or a penthouse. Typically what they do is they'll put you on a higher level floor so you end up getting a better view or they might put you on a newly renovated room. Also as a bonus tip, if you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, you wanna make sure that you let the restaurants know because you never know you might get a free gift or a dessert. Another thing that a lot of people don't know is that the Cosmopolitan actually provides complimentary chocolates if you tell them that you're celebrating something special. Mistake number three I see rookies make is in their hotel room, they go to the mini fridge and they just move stuff out of place. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is the mini fridges and the snack bars operate off of a weight sensor. So if you move that $20 water bottle, even just a bit, you are going to get charged for it. And since I'm on the topic about mini fridges, hotel rooms don't normally offer a complimentary mini fridge. They obviously don't want you to buy food and store it in your room. What they want you to do is spend more money in their resort and in their restaurants. But if you do have a medical condition or maybe prescription that you need refrigerated, make sure that you let them know because at that point they might be able to offer something for you. Some hotels do offer a mini fridge as an extra add-on. I've heard that could range anywhere between 100 bucks to 150 bucks. Mistake number four rookies make is showing up to Las Vegas and not knowing how busy it actually gets. So what do they do? They forget to buy tickets for the attractions, make dinner reservations or the shows. The problem is, is almost every single week in Las Vegas, there's a big major event or convention going on. Especially during the weekends, it gets crazy packed. So to be on the safe side, let's say you wanna go to a specific attraction or a specific restaurant, make sure that you make your reservations at least 30 days in advance. Mistake number five rookies make is not packing at least one comfortable pair of shoes. Trust me when I say this, the hotels are not close. Even if it looks that way on the maps or even just looking out in general. The reason why they look like they're close is because they were actually engineered that way. The problem is sometimes it can take you 15 to 20 minutes just to walk from one resort to the next. The reason is because you're not really using the street. You're using pedestrian bridges and walking inside the casinos. Sometimes it's like walking through a maze and you end up getting lost. That's because the casinos are so massive. To be on the safe side, it might sound a little bit excessive, but plan to walk 15 to 20,000 steps per day. That's typically what my wife and I end up doing and that's because we take Uber everywhere. And speaking about walking, walking is not actually a negative thing in Vegas. It's actually something that I would highly encourage you to do, especially at least for one day. I would say walk the strip, explore. There is so much to see especially at nighttime, I'm telling you, it's beautiful. It is the best feeling in the world to just walk and watch the lights. If up to this point you've learned something or received value, do me a huge favor, pause the video and drop an emoji with an alien in the comment section. It really helps my channel grow and it'll help the video get a lot more views. All right, let's get back into the video. Mistake number six rookies make is flaunting their money in public or even just simply counting their money in public. This is an absolute no-no. You never know who's watching you and yes, Vegas is a beautiful 
beautiful city, but in every beautiful city, there is horrible people planning to do horrible things. So if you are gonna be counting your money, make sure you do that at a restaurant or maybe go into a restroom. And speaking about horrible people, another thing that you need to look out for, this hasn't happened to me, but I have heard that it has happened to other people and I've seen it happen in other places. This will happen, especially in like very, very crowded areas, you wanna be careful. You know those areas where you're basically walking and it's shoulder to shoulder? All of a sudden, somebody bumps into you and what you don't realize is they actually stole your wallet or your phone. You just got pickpocketed. So just be aware if you're walking in a crowded area, this could be a possibility. To be safe, maybe keep your phones and your wallets on your front pockets. Mistake number seven rookies make is thinking that you can come to Vegas only during the weekends. Keep in mind, yes, Vegas gets super busy during the weekends, but coming to Vegas during the weekdays could actually be a lot cheaper and it's still really, really fun. There is still a lot of stuff going on because technically Vegas is never really dead. But like I mentioned earlier, keep in mind, if you're coming during the weekends, there's gonna be a lot more traffic. So what are the hotel prices? is gonna do, they're gonna skyrocket. A lot of people don't know that coming to Vegas during the weekdays is actually a lot cheaper. Sometimes you can find room rates with resort fees included 50 to 60 bucks a night. Mistake number eight rookies make is just blindly taking pictures with street performers and then they end up in an awkward situation afterwards. What you're gonna notice is there is a ton of street performers all throughout the strip. You're gonna see Mickey Mouse characters, Transformers, Showgirls, Spider-Mans, and so many more. Their main goal is to get you to take a picture with them and hoping that you do not ask for a price up front. If you don't ask for a price up front, they might try to finesse you for 20, 30, 40 dollars. I've even heard a hundred dollars for a photo. It is important to note that it is actually not legal for them to set a price or charge you a specific rate. Technically, you don't have to pay them anything. They're gonna use sneaky tactics to try to guilt trip you or try to convince you to tip them more. Technically, they're only allowed to accept tips or donations since they can't actually legally set a price. Look, if you wanna take a photo with them, by all means do it. Just to be on the safe side, to avoid an awkward situation afterwards, make sure that you negotiate or agree on a price up front. That way you're not surprised at the end. Another important thing to keep in mind, if it's multiple characters, they're all gonna expect an equal amount. So make sure that it's first very clear how much they're expecting out of each, or else they're gonna try to get you to tip double. Mistake number nine rookies make is assuming just because it's a hotel food court, it's gonna be super cheap. Trust me, sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you might end up paying 50 to $70 for a meal for two. Instead, if you're looking to save money while still eating delicious food, Go download my list with over 140 things to do. I talk about the best affordable food, all the free things to do, and all the free shows you do not wanna miss. There's also ways you can get into the nightclubs for free, but I'll tell you more about that here in a second. Mistake number 10 I see rookies making is falling victim to the hustlers. So obviously you already know about the street performers, but there's still more things you need to watch out for. For example, if you see the lady right there in the pink blazer, she's asking people about their Vegas stay or maybe trying to go up to them and make some small talk. These hustlers are timeshare salespeople. They normally work behind or a few feet away from what looks to be like a help desk. The desk usually has signs to reel you in. For example, they'll say free dinners, free shows. Their main goal is to try to convince you to take a two hour presentation where they're gonna try to pressure you to take out a loan for a timeshare. There's also monks on the strip walking around. Supposedly they don't speak English. They go up to you and they put a bracelet on you. Then they ask you for a donation. There's also people selling CDs they're gonna come up to you asking you if you support local artists and supposedly you take these CDs home and sometimes they're blank. And if you're walking on the strip and you see somebody running their little gambling operation, for example, the three card Monty, run far away, don't do it, it is staged. All the people that look like they're winning are actually in on it. Trust me when I say this, just walk away, it's not worth it unless you're prepared to just give them your money. And the thing is, there's also dangerous areas you wanna avoid, but I'll tell you more about that here in a bit. Mistake number 11 rookies make is going way too hard on the first day. I'm talking about food or adult go-go juice. Watch out for overindulging on the food. Trust me, I get it, you wanna eat all of it, it is delicious, so do I. But you don't wanna end up getting to the point where you're sick and then you gotta cancel all your reservations for the rest of the day because now you're full and not feeling well. Remember that sometimes some of these meals can be massive and can be shared between two people. And additionally, on the adult go-go juice, you definitely wanna tone it down. If you drink too much early on, you might end up having a crash where you're gonna be sleeping for the rest of the day or you might be sick for the rest of the week. So pace yourself. If you're gonna be buzzing, just keep a little buzz and just keep it going all day or as long as you want, right? Maybe not all day. 
As we all know this, adult go-go juice can lead to way more problems and mistakes. For example, mistake number 12. Casinos are already in the business of taking your money, meaning the odds are never on your side. At the end of the day, the house is always gonna win. They want you to keep drinking more so that way you're not aware of the decisions you're making. So please, to be on the safe side, do not gamble while intoxicated. Mistake number 13 rookies make is a mistake I see all the time. They think that they can outsmart the casino. Listen to me, you cannot outsmart the casino even if you think you're the best player in the world or if you're counting cards, guess what? The man upstairs, he's watching you. Bro, they got cameras everywhere. Sober, drunk, intoxicated, doesn't matter. Odds are not on your side. If you are gonna gamble, just expect the money to be lost. Play with money you're willing to lose. And speaking about strangers watching you, that leads me to mistake number 13. A mistake that a lot of rookies make that you should never do is do not leave your personal items or your drinks unattended. You never know if somebody's gonna slip something into your drink or run away with your personal belongings. Yes, maybe it sounds crazy, but it's true. There's bad people out there ready to do bad things. Mistake number 14 rookies make is only staying on the strip. Trust me, there is a lot of other things to do other than just staying on the strip. For example, you can go downtown, you can go to the Red Rock Canyon, you can go to the Valley of Fire State Park, there's the Hoover Dam. The Fremont Street Experience is definitely something you gotta do, that's in downtown Vegas. They got free live music every single day starting at 6 p.m. They got three stages. This is basically like the place if you wanna go party on a budget. They also got street performers. Some of them are super talented. Some of them are musicians, magicians. Some are funny, some are crazy, but it's a good time. You can also ride ATVs in the desert. You could even ride horses. Mistake number 15 rookies make is thinking they could do all of Vegas in one trip. I mean, maybe if you're gonna go for 365 days, you might be able to do everything. The problem is, is there, there's always a new restaurant. There's always a new casino, there's always a new attraction. It is impossible to do everything on one trip. I've been to Vegas 12 times and I still haven't even done a fraction of everything there is to do out there. Mistake number 16 I see rookies make is over planning their day. Look, I get it, you're overly excited, you wanna do as much things as possible, but there's always gonna be a lot of unexpected things that are gonna come up. So to be on the safe side, I would keep your daily itineraries to maybe two places to eat per day, and maybe three activities during the day and one activity during nighttime. What I like to do is I like to space everything out two to three hours apart. Yes, it might be a little bit excessive, but at least I'm able to do all the activities that I plan on doing. Mistake number 17 I see rookies make is not taking advantage of the nightclubs for free. Yeah, that's right. You can literally get into the nightclubs at no cost. Vegas has some of the most popular DJs in the world and their nightclubs and day clubs, in my opinion, are some of the best. And the best part is you can get into them for free. So what the clubs have is they have something called a guest list. As long as you arrive before a certain time, they let you into the nightclub for free. Getting into this guest list is free. What the clubs do is they'll set up promoters throughout the strip so you'll normally see them outside. They're gonna be wearing like a lanyard or a branded shirt. There is literally no strings attached so if they are trying to finesse you for some cash run away it's probably a hustle so there's definitely a downside to it let me give you an example if you're going to the club to see a specific headliner that headliner is not going to arrive sometimes till around one in the morning to maybe three four in the morning but in order for you to get into the club for free one of the stipulations is you have to arrive on or before 10 or 11 p.m so that's a pretty big gap if you want to see the headliner and remember that the drinks inside the club are expensive i think the most i paid for a drink inside was about 80 dollars keep in mind it was a gut buster that thing was massive i was basically one and done but 80 bucks that's a lot of cash. Mistake number 18 rookies make is not planning for the weather. Trust me, I've been there in the past. You do not want to be like me and have to spend almost two hours going to Ross to buy yourself a jacket, beanie, and gloves because you didn't plan for the cold weather. Obviously, we're talking about mother nature and it is unpredictable. So there's two things that I like to do. Number one, I look seven days in advance to see what the weather's gonna be like. And the second thing that I'll do is I'll look last year around that time for that week. I look at the weather to see what that was and that gives me a good assumption. Mistake number 19 rookies make is one of the most obvious things you should never do and that is jaywalking. I know it sounds obvious, but there's a lot of people that are going to do it. You don't want to be one of those and you definitely don't want to get run over by a car or end up having to pay a hefty fine during your vacation. And mistake number 20 that rookies make is a mistake that should be avoided at all cost. Like literally, this is one of the most dangerous things you could do, so don't do it. If you haven't listened to anything else I said, listen to this. Do not think that it's a good idea to walk through the neighborhood around the Strat at nighttime. And also don't walk from the Strat to Fremont at night. That is another big no-no. 
no. The area around the Strat is so bad that some taxis won't even go there at nighttime. Generally, that area is considered to be one of the roughest parts of Vegas. Now listen to this because this is also very, very important. I'm gonna be doing my best to upload informative videos that provide as much value as possible all about Las Vegas. So if you thought this video was informative, just wait till the videos I hit you with in the future. In order for you to be notified of those videos when they are uploaded, make sure that you pause the video right now and go subscribe and hit the bell notification. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about my top recommendations on fun things to do in Las Vegas right now. Have you ever wondered where you can go experience some of the best views in all of Las Vegas? Well, in my opinion, the best views are gonna be off of a helicopter. Personally, I've done Maverick helicopters about three times already. I normally like to do the strip tour at night. Always a fun experience, but this last time, the pilot was super friendly, even remembered us by our names. Another thing I highly recommend you do is check out Adrenaline Junkies ATV tours. Personally think ATV tours in the desert is an absolute must. Can be a bit pricey, but definitely budget for it because it's 100% worth it. Next, the Museum of Illusion was also a lot of fun. Basically, it's like a museum filled with exhibits and rooms that'll trick your brain. Just look into it, it's an absolute banger. There's two new restaurants with rooftop bars. Some will argue that these rooftop bars have some of the best views of the strip. Check out Old Red by Blake Shelton and on the fourth level there's a rooftop bar. But if you are gonna go, make sure you make your reservations in advance because as you could see here, if you didn't make your reservations, you'd be waiting in this line. Also, you wanna check out Brewdog. On the second level, it also has a really cool rooftop bar. On one side, you have gorgeous views of the Cosmopolitan and on the other, you have amazing views of the New York, New York. If you're gonna be in Vegas, definitely look into the T-Mobile Arena. They're always having massive events. I also had an amazing time doing the go-kart tours. Basically, it's an electric vehicle, self-guided tour with a speaker that's giving you fun facts and cool history about the city. It's pretty fun, definitely gonna do this again. And I cannot stress how much I love rock and potato. This is inside the Showcase Food Court. It's right next to the M&M store. Go up the escalators, turn left, and you'll see it. The food is delicious. And speaking about delicious food, do yourself a favor and go to Chino's Mexican Kitchen off the strip. Order yourself the Aztec taco. Like, my mouth is literally watering as I'm thinking about it. It was damn good. Well, that's it. Peace!